This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Late on a sultry afternoon in Paris in July 1976, a middle-aged man strolled from his office and into the rush hour crowds. He wore horn-rimmed glasses and carried a battered briefcase. Alain Bernard, a lawyer, had been a corporate executive for 15 years but looked more like an academic. Billboards of bronzed girls in bikinis smiled down on Bernard as he jostled his way towards the metro. It was nearing the time of year when millions of Parisians would leave the city for their annual summer holidays. Bernard sidestepped an elderly man bent over a pile of magazines. The man was cutting the twine from the bundle and stacking the copies of Paris Match on the racks of the newsstand. Bernard's eyes followed the recognizable bright red logo. Then, having glimpsed the cover photo, he froze. The dark eyes glowering from the familiar face had stopped him in his tracks. A cold, arrogant, but handsome face. There was no mistake. It was Charles Sobrage. The headline read, Death Rides the Road to Kathmandu. Bernard hurriedly bought a copy of the magazine, sat down at a pavement café and contemplated the cover. Charles was pictured in a pose Bernard knew well, one hand on his hip and the other on a table scattered with dollars. Next to Charles was a dark-haired young woman, wearing sunglasses and leaning forward in a low-cut T-shirt. She looked more attractive than Bernard remembered her. Police have embarked on a massive manhunt for three brutal killers, read the photo caption. They slay young hitchhikers on the holiday road. A dozen victims have so far been found. Horrified, he quickly opened the magazine where his eye was caught by a lurid comic strip. It showed his friend Charles with two young travellers on a palm-fringed beach. Charles's girlfriend, Marie-André, was silhouetted against the tropical moon, holding up a syringe. Next, two bodies were pictured lying on the sand. Charles bent over one of them. His girlfriend knelt next to the body of a man in shorts. Then the body was on fire, and Marie-André was smiling as flames soared into the air. In the last frame, the young couple peered demoniacally from the page as smoke billowed behind them. Bernard felt sick. Surely, he told himself, it was impossible. It was absurd. And who was their accomplice? An Indian national, apparently a young man called Ajay, whom Bernard was sure he had never met. He turned the page and found a photograph of a girl in a bikini, her arms outstretched and her eyes closed. An eighteen-year-old American found dead in Pattaya. The caption read, Another victim of the fiendish trio? Almost against his will, his eyes skimmed the story. Charred corpses in Kathmandu, covered with stab wounds, throats cut, necks broken, druggings and drownings, teenagers burned alive in Bangkok. All the work of a mysterious Alain Gautier, now one of the most wanted men in the world. Could Charles have committed those crimes? It was still a mystery to him how his own life, that of an orderly and respectable bachelor, had become intertwined with this wounded young man, an incorrigible criminal whose career was now sending the world's press into paroxysms of grisly prose. Looking up at the blue sky, his thoughts travelled back to the day ten years earlier when a sudden impulse to do good for the world had drawn him into close proximity with this terrible darkness. Bernard remembered he had been taking a Sunday afternoon stroll through the park near his home. It was 1966. He was 38, prosperous, but bored. The air was sweet with the smell of freshly cut grass and flowers, but the ease of his cultivated life seemed sterile and cloying. He was trapped in a ghetto of privilege.